the story of Limbus is mostly completely divorced from the story of uh, the Botany Corporation and uh, Ruina. It's same city, same setting, but essentially the story of Angela ended ends for now with Ruina. But Although I will say that chapter four of uh, Limbus does in does introduce uh, what many consider a uh, a hard XP, who is quite precious. That's fair. Rights table, very good. But still, it to French table again. Oh no, my table. My table, it's suffering so badly. But alas. I still very much recommend Limbus because God, Project Moon and this Limbus does so much to expand the world. We did be yeah, we did very much meet a Lobotomy Corporation employee. It does very much deal with the aftermath of the aftermath of Lobotomy Corporation and yeah, that's true. It's after the flip for the first time, it was pretty much gone. Oh, well and good. At any rate, we had our uh, brief discussion, brief dive into Limbus, and honestly. Maybe, if you're interested enough, maybe I'll actually play through Chapter 4 on stream sometime. But until then, we're back with Paranormosite. Last time we streamed this game, we delved, started diving into the main story of the game with our three main characters over here. We've, we saw in some shape or form... During Shogo's party. Need to, like, remember how to play. God, yeah. It's... Ruin has so much. Ruin has so much to master, but... Uh, really satisfying when you do, but really difficult to actually... Master to any degree of... The devs were like, nah. The devs chose tragedy instead of uh, friendship which understandable that is project moon for you want to complete the project sephirot crew of librarians oh temptation to start over is there we say i i did start over at, at one point in time but uh, i do need to actually pick it up and continue yeah like, after a certain point, I almost have to start over from scratch and dive into things, learn things from the beginning. So we don't actually... If I recall... We need to re-familiarize ourselves with our uh, seven mysteries, because the on our last stream, we uh, our three main characters picked up their curses. We found out that Harue, our unhinged milf, picked up the curse of the. Uh, Haunting Clappers. The... Yeah, Detective Tetsuo picked up the head of the Evergreen Beach. Who can kill by trying to mislead the Curse Bearer with lies. And... 
Yako picked up the uh, Fool's Procession. Okay. So let's pick up with uh, Tetsuo's story. So, some of your previous events. Tsutsumi and Jun are sorting through the facts at the scene of Officer Hajime Yoshimi's mysterious death. Tsutsumi denies the existence of the Rite of Resurrection until the curse echo of the Evergreen Beach appears before them. Which is now Tetsuo Tsutsumi's curse. Hajime Yoshimi is the detective the officer whose murder they're investigating. See, so Yako's investigating the suicide of her friend Michio. Michio is also involved in... with Hajime to some degree. Because Hajime reached out to... Uh, was a good dude who reached out to the youth in the area to try and... Yeah, juvenile. Did great work with juvenile cases. Was apparently involved. One of the cases he was working on was Michio's case. Let's see... Where is Harue? Harue is investigating the kidnapping and murder of her son. And in her last fragment, with Richter here, Richter was telling us a story about how he met with a witness who said that, uh, one, he saw Michio talking to Shuichi, and two, Michio threatened to curse him. So these three stories are interla interlocked to some degree. Interlocked, interlaced, intertwined. Let's see where things go here. We're still at the gardens. Okay, so let me get this straight, boss. The right of resurrection really exists. Detective time. Detective Tim. And to use it, you have to kill people. Using the power of curses and the seven mysteries of Hanjo. And the curse you have from the story of the evergreen beach that's been told in this area. Was that right? Yeah, pretty much. They're quick at the uptake. You weren't your usual silly self when you were explaining, so I knew you were telling the truth. I'm never silly. The only thing I have trouble believing is that you're taking this occult stuff seriously now. I mean, talk about paranormal. I thought you didn't believe in any of that. It's not that I don't believe in it. My familiarity with it is why I've tried not to get too close. Are you... You're just being a sore loser? Not used to admitting you're wrong? Hey, you smug little prick. Oh, shut up and listen to me. No point in trying to hide this anymore. You won't get anywhere if you don't understand this, so listen up. Please, just listen. You don't have to keep saying it, I'm listening. We don't have time to waste, we'll talk as we walk. Hey! Hey, wait for me, boss! Oh, wow. Whoa, investigation theme! We're going places. I dig this. Uh, sorry. I just want to double-check one thing. You're telling the truth, right? This isn't a side effect of your, sen of your senility? It's the truth. Not like I can prove it, though. Oh. I'm sure you already know this, but this is all top secret. No sharing it with anyone. All right. You can trust me not to. But, no, I just can't believe it. I heard rumors that you used to be a member of a secret division attached to the Security Bureau. Well, can't believe we actually have a department called Paranormal Affairs. Oh. Yeah, I'm sure it comes as a shock. Couldn't believe it myself. 
But the higher-ups were messing with me. But they had me worried for a while there. No, this is incredible! That's the whole reason I became a cop. I was also always fascinated by secret agencies and stuff. You're serious. Thinking about it, it totally makes sense. If curses and spirits really do exist, then of course we need a special department to protect citizens from them. You seem a bit too eager to believe all this. And hang on, I thought you joined up because of me. Come on, boss. Do you only have one favorite food? You can like more than one thing. No, you can only like one thing. And you have to vehemently defend it online. Yeah, yeah, whatever. In any case, the official stance is that the supernatural doesn't exist, so paranormal affairs operates in secret. Still not sure why they stuck me there. These four years, I've worked nothing but cases involving the supernatural. Ooh. Paranormal Affairs Bureau. Officially called the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department, Security Division, Special Security Unit, Paranormal Affairs Bureau. That's a long name. It's more commonly referred to simply as Paranormal Affairs. Only a handful of people know of its existence, even within the police force. As the name suggests, it specializes in the investigation of par investigation and resolution of cases involving paranormal phenomena. Since the ex existence of paranormal phenomena is not public knowledge, nor is it readily believed by the general population, the Bureau's activities are conducted in the utmost secrecy. Currently, there are only five members, including the Chief. The Bureau has a network of psychic contacts across the country who assist in their cases, including Mio Kurosuzu. That's Yako's friend. The Bureau undertakes investigations into any suspicious stories that cross their desk, but the vast majority turn out to be hoaxes. Due to the sheer volume of cases, close-lipped, experienced detectives without... <sighs> close-lipped, experienced detectives without paranormal abilities of their own, which is Tetsuo Sutsumi, are sometimes assigned to investigate. The current Chief of Paranormal Affairs is a man named Kuri Ku Kuiru... Kuriru, ku, ku, kuiru Nakagoshi he was born to a family of psychics who had been involved in keeping the world safe from paranormal phenomena for generations. He has served as Mio Kurosuzu's mentor since discovering her. Kuiru is an elusive figure. Very few have met him in person, and he is rarely seen in the office. It is said that this is because he has oft been the target of curses. However, some of those. Some theorize that it is, in fact, because Kuriru is not actually of flesh and blood at all. Oh. His seat in the office is usually occupied by a Nue, a legendary creature found in Japanese folklore. The Nue res resembles an ordinary white thrush and acts as Kuriru's messenger, leading to uh, bizarre secrets of police officers earnestly putting their findings to a bird. The term Nakagoshi case serves as a code name used to refer to cases under investigation by Paranormal Affairs. Nakagoshi case. Which is fair. Huh. Ooh. We fully updated both of these, fellas. All right, June encountered a curse echo. It's getting the mysterious death of his colleague, Hatya, Hajime Yoshimi, with Tetsuo Tsutsumi. Accepted without a moment's hesitation. Born to a relatively well-off household, June developed a healthy sense of self-esteem and an optimistic outlook on life. Although watching action movies and detective series as a child instilled in him a desire to help those in need, it was the sight of Tetsuo Tsutsumi, who was in charge of investigating a case Jun was involved in as a student, that truly inspired him to become a police officer. While Jun still maintains a strong respect for Tetsuo, he also gets much enjoyment out of making casual cracks to get a rise out of the veteran officer. As an adult, Jun continues to hold on to the faint hope that the world is as he pictured it in his youth. A thrilling place in which superhuman heroes do better against secret evil organizations. Attended the academy with Victor Kai, who is now a PI. 
who initially became friendly when Jun found Victor holed up alone in the reference room scouring over old crime data. Invited him to go pop to go bowling, a popular pastime during this era. And yep, Tetsu Tsutsumi, or Echo, the Evergreen Beach. It's possessed by the Evergreen Beach. Curse Echo while investigating the former Yasta Gardens. Previous member of the Secret Paranormal Affairs Bureau within the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department. He makes use of. Who is there? Sorry. Use this experience to investigate the oncoming, ongoing large scale curse incident with his partner, Jun Erio. Rather than sitting behind a desk, Chief Inspector Sutsumi always worked in the field as he moved his way up the police force. Behind his stern face lies a compassionate man, ever prepared to help his fellow officers. But same attentiveness to his attentiveness to his work and colleagues, however, cost Tetsuo his merit several time years ago. Tetsuo has a penchant for candy and desserts, which he tries but fails to conceal from the other officers at the risk of appearing soft. Oh, he delights in buying local sweets whenever he is sent to investigate a case and would often volunteer to be dispatched dispatched to distant locations to acquire them while he was with the Paranormal Affairs Bureau. Surprisingly knowledgeable about current trends. A trade he puts down to investigation-related research, which is actually spurned by his wish to have something to discuss with his daughter. Oh. That's sweet. Why is this going to be vibes of the consuming shadows? Things. Feeling the existence of a secret department is against the rules, even to a fellow cop. This is an emergency. I need his help. I'll tell him. Shall we figure? He's not stupid, but he sure can be slow sometimes. I think that positive that positivity of his may come in handy at some point. So, do you, you know, have it? Have what? Spirit sense, of course. Aren't you what they called spiritually gifted? Nope. Never felt anything at all. If I did, I'd be lightweight at best. One beer and I'm down for the count. Dad! That's the same, the same, <laughs> that's the same joke Yoko was making in the prologue. Oh, huh. Is that how people in the field quantify someone's spirit sense? Like, how much liquor they can handle? Nope, that's just me. Thought I'd help get the point across. Oh. Huh. Oh. Sorry. Seems like I keep disappointing you. No, it's not your fault, boss. That's... This, this, this fucking kid and his duck face. I'm just disappointing you yet again. I'll tell you one more thing. Spirit sense is usually something you're born with. It's tough to develop it later on. What? So there's no hope for me? No. Say it ain't so. Of course you were interested. Well, you never know. You may have some hidden potential. You know, there's a high schooler who's got so much spirit sense that she works on the front lines. I say work, but she wasn't paid because it was supposedly part of her training. Y yikes. That seems like it'd be in violation of Article 69, nice, of the Labor Standards Act. Wow, you really know the law. No comment. Even the occult field has workers' rights issues, huh? <laughs> Fair enough. Shall we figure? Hello there. Mm -hmm. Someone's watching us. Doesn't seem like they're gonna run. Let's just keep an eye on them for now. Let's keep talking. So, what do we do now? We've got this Rite of Resurrection and the curse echoes of the Seven Mysteries of Honjo. The curse is being spread out around the city it is a bit of an emergency. Is that bad? I'll put it this way, it's like handing out guns all over town. Ah, uh, jeez, that's real bad! It is. So we need to find the source and put a stop to it before something terrible happens. Usually this would be a job for paranormal affairs, but talk to them on our way here. Main team is tied up till tomorrow night. That's that's inconvenient. 
They told me to deal with it myself. So it'd be fine since I have some uh, experience. Huh? What? That overtime you mentioned means... Yep, you're gonna help me, partner. <laughs> like I just ignored the stranger and continued his task. It, 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 just, yeah. Just observe from a distance. Alright, let's do this. You seem a bit too eager to dive into all this. You really have no reservations to work in a case you know nothing about? You said this was an emergency. I didn't think we had a choice. I'm just trying to be logical about this, boss. You really are something. Might actually be nice having you around. Why, thank you. So what exactly do we do? These curses are connected to the seven mysteries, and the people who have the others should be all here in town. Right, if there's seven of them, that means there's six more out there. We have to stop them all before they kill anyone with their curses. If we can, we should find and collect all the curse stones. But boss, what you said earlier? Killing a curse bear, I get too close to completing the Rite of Resurrection. Won't your life be in danger if they find out you're a curse bear? Pretty much. Is that your duck face? We can't let that happen. Should you even be out here right now? Hiding would only be a waste of time. Mystery of the one-sided reed. It's associated with Ryogoku Bridge. Something would be quick enough to run into the one-sided reed's curse bear. No such luck, it seems. If nothing else, maybe word will spread that the cops are on the lookout and people will behave. That's put a lot of trust in whoever those other people are. I mean, we did see. But it's possible that other curse bears with the same idea will come here. Talk to anyone you see who seems suspicious. Uh, that means someone who may have the power of a curse. Understood. In that case. I don't ask that guy who's been watching us this whole time. Ah, uh, you noticed him too? Well, good luck. Hey, you there. Sorry to bother you, but I've got some questions. I'm with the police. Alright, who is it? Oh, it's you. Thanks for your cooperation. We'll be asking you a few quest a few things, mister. Yutaro, Na Yutaro Nabigaki. That's your name, correct? Uh, yes. I don't mind answering your questions. You're a detective. Did something happen? Oh, right. Lots of things have been happening around here. Like, people die. Oh, yeah. So, what to make of this guy? Time to jump him. Before he steps on us. Man identifies himself as Yutaro Namagaki, 21 year old college student. He was watching us so calmly. We need to be careful with this guy. Remember from the prologue, we know how to beat him. It comes down to it. If this were a normal case, I'd be fine letting him take the reins. Curses are involved here. I should take over. Boss, let's talk to this guy. So what is it you're so what is it you're doing here? Ah uh, must be the incident at the former Yasuda Gardens, the dead policeman. I can't imagine a detective would come all the way out here as otherwise. Huh? Say, Mr. Detective Have you ever heard of the Evergreen Beach? Hmm. Answer my question. Why don't you answer my question first? What are you doing out here? I was answering your question. Came here to look for the Evergreen Beach from the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. Actually, I was wondering if either of you knew anything about it. Hmm. Not here. 
the evergreen beach are after, he'd be better off looking after, looking around the former Yasta Gardens than here. Oh, you know a lot about this. But that's what I thought. Detectives, you have the cursed stone of the evergreen beach, don't you? You! How did you know? How did you know? He was kind of observing us. Erdio, you idiot. <laughs> well, that was much easier than expected. Oh, crap, sorry! That was simple interference. I feared you would have taken the curse if you were just in the gardens. Uh, inference. I read that wrong. If you know that, then... You must be a curse bearer yourself. I have no intentions of hiding anything. I plan to tell you for the start. Look. This is my curse stone. I believe it's called the Footwashing Mansion. That's right, but are you sure about this? I'm not so rash that I'd kill someone as soon as I found out they were a curse bearer. Not without talking to them first. You're the same, aren't you, detectives? You wouldn't use a curse on a normal person. <laughs> Let's speak as equals, shall we? Oh boy, we got our use curse button. Boss? Sure. We'd rather resolve this amicably, too. <laughs> Fortunately, unlike Shogo, we, it seems we can actually avoid pressing the yes kill button. It is a curse bear. May only be he, be he may only be talking with us to try and activate his curse. I have to be wary of anything he asks me to do. Could tackle him and pin him to the ground. That might have something to do with his curse. Any slip of the tongue could get us killed. I have to try and discern what activates his curse. So what do I do? But you're a curse bearer. So please be careful. Fortunately, I don't think he knows which one of us is the curse bearer yet. Play things right, we should be okay. What was his curse tell again? The, uh... God, I don't remember. Because he was the foot-washing mansion, and we don't have actually... We encountered it. We know how to beat it. We know how to we know how to beat the foot washing mansion. And that's simply put we turn the uh, voice volume down so you don't actually hear its commands. I don't remember what triggers the curse of the foot washing mansion though. Before we talk, there's something I should tell you. Hmm? This is my curse stone. The evergreen beach, just like you thought. What? What well, boss, why would you tell him? As far as the curse works. Oh. Boss, if, are we having another senior moment? If you tell him that. This is actually smart by Tetsuo. It hangs to death anyone who would try to mislead me. Hmm. So if you try to lie to me, the curse stone will let me know. I don't have to use it to tell, understand? Well, really? That's super useful. I see. Understood. So when we got the, uh... We got the use curse alert. That means that, uh... Yeah. That is actually really clever of Tetsuo here. So that means that when we got the use curse alert... That means that Namigaki was lying to us. Which means that Namigaki was lying to us when he said that he wanted to speak as equals. He is very clearly lording his curse above us. That's a pretty useful power for a detective. Now then, let's talk. Damn, it seems I've lost the upper hand. No point for petty tricks then, I'll be honest with you. He's not going- Narrative voice! He's not going to be honest with us. So far so good. Wow, alright, he's misleading us. There's someone I want to bring back. So, I'd like your assistance in collecting soul dregs. 
Can't help you. Please. All you have to do is tell me who the other curse bearers are. Sorry, but it's a police officer. I can't just look the other way and let you go. Please, if you help me, I'll let you two go as well. Is that a threat? No. <laughs> Narrative voice. That was, in fact, a threat. It's your final warning. Bro is just... Hmm. My curse. The foot-washing mansion. Did you really think you could escape it just by being careful? It didn't matter to me which of you were the curse bearer. I'd be taking both of your soul dregs anyway. Wait! Namigaki! The foot-watching mansion is a powerful curse, and so simple to activate. It's ready whenever I need it. There was no escape from the voice of my feet. There we go. Get out of here. Hurry. I'll find you later. But what Okay. Too late. Hear the voice of my curse echo. The voice of his curse echo? <laughs> Fortunately, Namigaki, we know how to beat you. What? Why isn't my curse echo working? Impossible. This has never happened. What's happening? I don't hear anything. Ario, now, grab him. <laughs> right. Namigaki, get down. God, damn it! Boss, here is Curse Stone. Good work. Give it to me. We got the foot washing mansion curse. Hell yeah. Damn it. Why? What do you think, boss? Should we lock him up? I haven't even touched you. You can't consider that assault of a police officer. Let him go. All we need is the stone. Oh, how could this happen? My right of resurrection. Give it up. The right was too good to be true from the start. I don't know what happened to you, but you're better off mourning whatever, whoever you lost the right way. Get them, my liege. Now get out of here. Damn it. Got his ass. Whew, that was a close one, huh, boss? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he'd probably be, we'd probably be dead if he'd activated that, his curse. Yeah, I'm not sure what, but something stopped his curse from... Ugh. Boss, are you okay? Does having another curse stone hurt? Yeah, the curse from this one is flowing into me, too. Oh, oh no. I saw what activates the curse of the foot-washing mansion, and the resentful memories bound to it. Ah, I see. I always thought this was this was one this one was one of the stranger of the seven mysteries. Now I know why. This sure is something. What did you see? Let's save that for later. All you need to know is for now is that it's a particularly powerful curse. We're lucky we took it from him quickly. Whew. Alright, let's see what this is all about. So. Kills by crushing one who hears the command wash. So the legend of the foot washing mansion residence in Mikisacho a giant foot drenched in blood smashed the ceiling wash it commanded the servants carefully washed the power the foot turned from whence it came fixing the roof it had broken man who had been visited by the foot every night asked a friend to trade houses with him that night, the foot stopped appearing. Oh. Huh. Quite literally use it without any setup, yeah. And all it involves is just hearing the command. And that is even more powerful than the fool's procession. 
Because the Fool's Procession requires 30, sec 30 seconds of setup and stealth. The Fool's Procession requires setup and stealth. While the uh, Foot Washing Mansion just requires curing. So the memory. <clears throat> she was an accomplished Anmyoji. Alas, she did not use her talents for the good of the world or the people, but for her own selfish pursuit of beauty. After a fierce battle, the woman dragged herself through the, through the streets. It was like something had gnawed away at her body. Will I die? I've already obtained what I needed. As long as I have this... Suddenly, a terrible realization dawned on her. Her legs wouldn't move. She fell to the ground. What was happening? Surprised, she looked down. Her foot... Once so beautiful and delicate, had grown ulcerated and rotten. He got her. She was on the verge of death and covered in filth to boot. Calling to a nearby house, her breath caught in her throat. The curious residents opened up and recoiled from what they saw. My foot is so filthy. Someone, please, quickly. The woman expired while mumbling something unintelligible. And so entered the life of a woman consumed by evil. Accomplished on Myoji. Using her t talents for her own beauty, but ended up losing to evil and being consumed by it. Lost her beauty in the process. Got shunned. Looking for help. Got shunned looking for help. Not for her own health, but for her own beauty. A selfish, selfish mm. death. Well, that makes one stone. Where do we go now? Visit all the places associated with the mysteries while it's still dark out. You have to do that all over again? I hope they aren't all as, as aggressive as him, but... People do crazy things to bring back people they love. It seems that the hatred the curse stones are imbued with make people more willing to kill. Really? Then what about you, boss? Fine. I may not have any spirit sense, but I'm tough when it comes to this stuff. That's why they love me in paranormal affairs. So you are spiritually gifted after all. Alright, let's head to the next place. Ooh. Okay, that was cool. I'm actually going to tinker with that. Briefly. I'll be honest with you. Kill! So far, so good. Huh. Hmm. Okay, so... That seems honest. Huh. What we can actually do here... The voice was cursed at him. This voice, this is... Ugh. It's Osutsumi, deceased. But washing Tsutsumi. My, my, Don, you seem to have arrived at a less than favorable result. It's mere conjecture on my part, but... I believe you may be aware of a way to escape Yutaro's curse. Fear not. You may make as many attempts as you please from the point Yutaro uses his curse.
Okay, realistically. Oh, wait. Okay, we'll jump back into here. So we can't actually kill him. Which means maybe he's not lying. He wasn't lying to us. That's curious. That's very curious indeed. Hmm. I like the process. I like the progression so far of uh, checking up on uh, all of our friends here. We are now fully in line here. So Yako acquires the curse of the fool's procession. Mio tries to persuade her to give up on going after the right of resurrection. Yako, of course, trying to resurrect Michio, her friend. Effects of other curse echoes already appearing at the school, so the two hurry to get out of the classroom. Let's check up on Yako. We've now moved on to 1 a.m. Hey, Mio? What was that just now? The way we sort of encountered just complete and utter darkness. It feels like what happened in Shogo's chapter when we encountered the beckoning lie. Could be another curse echo different from mine? I think so, yes. We may have been discovered by another curse bearer. Oh. Hmm. What's wrong? Shh. Someone's there. That classroom. What? Something moved inside. Well... What could go wrong? Check it out stealthily. Let me the Cursed Bearer who used that curse echo just now. If you can see who it is, it might help us decide what to do later. That's true. Okay, be careful. Well, can you see anything? Try and get a look around. Oh? Ah! Huh? Hello? Is that our homeroom teacher, Mr. Junochi? The person with him is he told me from Class A. Ooh, hello there. What? Oh gosh, they're shocked faces. Oh my. What is going on here? Oh. That bastard. He's at it again. Uh oh. I have to kill him. Whoa. We are feeling the curse. Let him get away with this. What? The curse. I could kill him with it. No, Yako. You can't use the curse stone. What's got it into you? Resist it. Who's there? Is someone there? This is bad. We have to go before they see us. Yako's fucking pissed. Hello, Kohei Jonichi. Kohei Jonichi. This is the witness who, uh... God, these three stories are so interwoven. This is the witness who Richter interviewed. Who said that he saw... Michio with, uh... Michio with Shuichi when he was kidnapped. So it's our Michio and Hitomi, the two juvenile cases who, uh... Detective Yoshimi was looking into before he died. Everything's get everything's I'm everything's interwoven. Things interwoven. Do you have a curse echo? We don't know. 
He might. Say, we don't know yet. They're both here. They may or may not have been the ones who uh, interacted with us to some degree. You say, we didn't actually know. So Koei is an English teacher and the home teacher for Class 2C at Komagara. Seen alone with Hitomi Okuda in a classroom late that night by Yako and Mio. Koei was an honor student and top of his class back in his high school days. At the apple of his parents' eye, he was placed under immense pressure to attend a first-rate university. Plans came to naught, however, when the pressure caused Koei to sink into a deep depression and fail his entrance exam. Even at the university he was able to enter, Kohei struggled to keep up with his classes, leaving him a vain but wounded young man. Kohei never aspired to be a teacher, but figured it was the least he could do with his talents. He considers his students to be beneath him, and largely looks down on them all. Well, beneath him, he told me. Oh, I, I like your design. That hairstyle is... I, I like your hairstyle. That's cool. Hitomi, Hitomi is a rebellious student in Class 2A at Komogata. On the rare occasion where she does show up to school, she skips all of her classes and spends her time hanging out on the rooftop with her fellow troublemakers. Hitomi is regarded by teachers as one of the worst offenders among the delinquent students attending Komogata. Hitomi was a fairly ordinary student when she started high school. However, trouble at home in her first year had her taking a turn for the worse. She began associating with a group of delinquents from other schools, with whom she'd wander around town at night to avoid returning home. Warnings from teachers about dress code and conduct violations have fallen on deaf ears, with Hitomi going on reactionary rampages around school with her friends, breaking windows and disrupting classes. Oh, wow. Recently, some teachers have taken to using harsher measures and even corporal punishment to correct Hitomi's behavior. Wow. This has only served to exacerbate the animosity between Hitomi and the school. Shocking, I know. Hitomi is widely regarded as the leader of the troublemakers at Komagata High, but the title does not mean much to her. Jesus. So here's Yutaro. Young man encountered at Ryagoku Bridge. Didn't hide the fact that he was a curse bearer. Curse stone recovered by Tetsuo Sutsumi. So, elite student at a prestigious university, this is a generous allowance he receives from his parents, who are both prominent local figures. Although Yutaro has lived a charmed material life, emotional neglect at home has caused him to develop a spoiled egotistical streak. The only kindness he knew growing up was from his family's maid. He still fondly thinks of the plain rice with butter they used to enjoy together. Huh. That's oddly sentimental. seems like they're not coming after us. I hope they didn't see our faces. But Yako, what came over you all of a sudden? Uh, uh, sorry. Thanks for stopping me. It's like this uncontrollable rage suddenly rolled up inside me. I wonder what's gotten into me. I can barely even remember what happened. <clears throat> I'm to interrupt again, but... The story of the fool's procession... Good food brings people together, yeah. Sometimes simple f sometimes the simplest of foods can be the best and most memorable. Not about the most complicated, but just the fact that you're sharing it together with good people that makes food good and memorable. That's all there is to it. Hmm. Really sorry. I do think it's partly the curse's influence on you, but we certainly saw something shocking. My heart's still pounding. I'm a little surprised you know who told me from Class A. She tends to stand out a lot. Gotcha. Oh, she certainly does dress like a delinquent, but she barely shows up to, shows up to school. 
could Mr. Junoji or Hitomi really be a curse bear? Oh, that's a face behind us. That's a face behind us. That's a face behind us. Yako. That's a face behind us. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, God. That's a face behind us. I don't like this whatsoever. Yeah, hi. Hi. Hi there. Hello. You're looking very friendly. I feel like you're the Whispering Canal. I vaguely feel like that's the face we saw when we encountered the Whispering Canal. And we are... And we are walking away from a situation, so we may be encountering the Whispering Canal. Hmm? When I give the signal, run. Go straight for the entrance. Don't look back, no matter what. Huh? Why? Did something happen? Something happened, didn't it? What about you, Mio? Hi! Hello there. I'll be fine. We'll meet up outside the school gates. I'm not there in ten minutes. Go straight home, okay? Okay. Go! Right! Mio, please be safe. You're... Don't look back. Don't look back. I don't like that scream! Please be okay, Mio. I have to get outside. Let's see. Get to the gates, I go by the gym, and... Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Hmm? What are you doing, miss? Eek! Huh? You shouldn't be here this late. Don't you know what time it is? Oh, Mr. Ashimia. Well, if it isn't little Yako. Anyway, students aren't supposed to be outside playing around at night. School janitor! Makoto Ashimia. Huh. He looks very tired. Understandable. Makoto was the janitor at Komagata High School. The predecessor was nearing retirement, so began working as, re as a, his replacement about six months ago. Makoto was popular among the students for his friendly and caring nature, going so far as to remember the names and faces of all those attending the school. He's affectionately known as Old Man Ashimia. He appears to be a simple, am amiable man. Hmm. <laughs> With the appears to be a simple, amiable man, Makoto's occasional shrewd remarks have led to speculation among students that he may have led a far more interesting life than, than it seems. Whatever the truth may be, he will be remembered as one of the seven mysteries of Komagata High School for some time to come. I know you're rough around the edges, but I didn't take you I didn't take you for one to act out like this. I'm sorry. Sorry. I forgot something back in the classroom. Hmm? No sass today, huh? Realized you were in the wrong, did you? Yes. What's something in your classroom, huh? You're a piece of work. Hmm? But you don't have nothing with you. Uh, oh. Wait, you do. What's that in your hand? Huh? Well, um, this is what I forgot. I, uh, got it from my grandpa. It's, uh, really important to me. Hmm. Girls these days sure have weird tastes. Well, okay. Better head straight home if you're done. I won't tell on you. No, wait. I can't let you walk home al alone this late. All right. Wait just a little. I'll hurry and lock things up. Ah, uh, but... Man, how awkward would this be if Mio turned up dead for via a curse inside and Mr. Ashimia just finds her? Hmm. <laughs> um, actually, a friend of mine is still inside. I think they'll be here soon. That's so. Who's your friend? Um, my classmate, Mio Kurosuzu. Ah, that transfer student. Freaking school rules already, huh? Didn't take her for the type. No, I was the one who dragged her here. 
Well, whatever. I'll go take a look. Be safer if you go home together. Oh, right. She's in the first floor hallways. Be careful, though. You don't know what may be there. What's that supposed to mean? First floor, eh? I'll be right back. <laughs> 2 a.m. Oh, dear. Come on, I got a high school entrance. Please don't die. I really like you, Mio. She's late. I'm waiting for 20 or 30 minutes, but there's no sign of her. No sign of Ash Mia either. I'm starting to get worried. I'm going to take a look. Oh dear. Mio, are you there? Oh no, she's dead. Uh, I don't want her to die. I like her. Huh? Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh uh, no. 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 Don't acknowledge it. Don't acknowledge it. Yeah, someone else got the Whispering Canal. Someone in the classroom got the whispering canal, damn it. Hee <laughs> huh. Mia, what happened? No, this is worse. Where did I go wrong this time? Hi. That's my fault. It's all my fault. Hey, let's throw a load with the curse bear. Mio. I'm sorry. I. The truth is. Ah! Dead. Hmm. One sided ya. Oh. One sided Yako. Which means we did not die via the. Uh, Whispering Canal. Finally encountered the one-sided reed. Which kind of makes sense, because it looked like Mio was missing a leg. May have been missing an arm, too. That's the one-sided reed's curse. My, my, Don. You seem to have arrived at less than favorable result. This was bound to happen. There is someone who must not be trusted. Once you have an idea of who it is, be sure to come back. I'm sure you'll see what you need to do differently. It's a difficult judgment for Yako Sakazaki to make, you see. This chapter will remain incomplete for now. I recommend you try another route. Now then, until next time. Ooh! Hmm! So we can't actually get out. So we gotta encounter... Mr. Junochi and Hitomi in that classroom. Yeah, that's what it feels like. That was definitely a different curse than... Uh, It was definitely a different curse than the Wandering Canal, than the uh, Whispering Canal. Interesting, very interesting. Anyway, time to time to time to go check in on Best Girl here, and Best Boy. So, a nice thought. So, Haruway obtained the curse of the Haunting Clappers. He's determined to use the Rite of Resurrection by stealing the remaining curse stones. Instructs her private investigator Richter to find the other curse bears. Yeah, we definitely did not encounter the haunt, the uh, one-sided reed in uh, Shogo's playthrough. It's been almost an hour since Richter left. 
promised he'd call me if anything happened. But he hasn't. So all I can do is wait and wait. I know it's dangerous to go out. And I can't just sit here and let this opportunity pass me by. I have to look for her. For Michio Shira Shiraishi. At first, I need to find more soul dregs. What's this? A newspaper? It must have fallen off the chair. Read it. It's a newspaper. And I've either been here for the guests. I hardly ever read them myself. So, of course, if Harurei hardly ever reads it, she would not have known that Michio Shira Shiraishi is dead. I don't think I've taken the time to go over one in years, in fact. I don't like I have anything better to do. Oh, wow. <coughs> Newspaper party time. <coughs> Society. It looks like the city's biggest problem right now is pollution. Remember how the air and water used to be even more polluted? River was covered in scum from all the sewage and industrial waste, and it stank so badly it'd make my eyes water. Eventually, people started getting sick and couldn't be ignored anymore. Fortunately, it's gotten much better since. But the air around the industrial district is still filthy with gas and smog. All sorts of articles about the current state of the economy. Now the post-war boom has passed its peak, we're moving into the era of large corporations. It's about 220 to 230 yen to the dollar. Manufacturing's on the rise and exports are healthy. The dollar's down from its height and people are saying it could fall further. There's no denying how much the standard of living has improved in these past few years. It's coming to own a car and television now, and supermarkets are better stocked than ever. Are there more society articles? There's one thing Honjo never wants for its horrific crimes. They found a police officer dead in a local park the other day. A lot of my family are in the police. I hope it wasn't, I hope it wasn't anybody I knew. I don't read the news anymore. Not since last year. It brings back bad memories. Hmm. What else is going on with the economy? Although with everyone flocking to the city, land prices are skyrocketing. Nowadays, most people can only dream of home, home ownership. The city center is going to be nothing but apartments before long. Hmm. I'm not exactly a businesswoman, so this feels this all feels like another world to me. Culture. Now that everyone has more spending money to go around, people are coming up with all kinds of new diversions. It was like only yesterday that people were flocking to the arcades to shoot aliens. Now we have these enormous theme parks and gaming machines that plug straight into our televisions. Next thing you know, we'll have uh, gotcha games. We can pay money to get advantages in our games. Everyone's talking about superhero series, foreign films and movies based on the latest bestseller. Back in my day, fusion rock and folk music was all the rage. But now it's all about city pop and idols. But it's hard to care about that sort of thing anymore. Here's the new big thing is some mascot line of delinquent birds. Mockingbirds, I think it's called. Is that what Richter was talking about? Trends seem to have such short shelf lives now with how quick the times are changing. I think I'm just too old to keep up anymore. It's young people who are leading the way with their modern worldviews. My generation will only fall further behind. If we are amenable to the changes that the new generations bring, the more willing they will be to uh, bring us along with them, so to speak. The angrier we get and the more we shun, the changes that new generations bring, the more they shun us in return. Keep your mind open. Keep your heart open to new things. Education articles. Ooh, is this what's going to tell us? Edu everyone attends high school now, even girls. Universal education policy, they call it. The fear of being last gen. Let me tell you, twin, I have a... It's a weird thing with work. I don't talk about work much. But I have a direct report now, and I was talking to... Working through something on a call with him. And it just... It just uh, offhand said something to me, just offhand like a, 
Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't have my glass. I don't have my glasses with me. I feel like an old man right now. No offense. I just kind of sat there thinking, like, I feel like an old man right now. No offense. Like, none taken. Maybe. It, are you calling me old? I, I feel like I'm aging a hundred years just from that comment alone. Oh God. What is happening to me? Where is my life going? I'm disintegrating. My bones are turning to dust. God. <gasps> Country's gotten rich enough that every child can go to school. Education is the backbone of modern society. If you want to work for a good company, you have to get into a good university. More people in the running than ever, the competition to get into those universities has gotten fierce, though. The new generation is rebelling. Schoolyard violence and delinquency are on the rise. My boy was too sensible to get mixed up in any of that. Ah, uh, well, Shuichi would have been the one to listen to them and figure, and try and understand why they were rebelling. I don't want to read anymore. Remind me of him. Television articles. I don't really watch much television. It feels as, uh, as if all the information in the world gets passed through that little black box. My father stopped them from reporting on the kidnapping back when it happened. I was glad about that. Less fuss. Now the comedy boom is over. All the comedians are, flock are flocking to other genres. The cult seems really popular at the moment. Look at all these paranormal specials. And there's the society. So oh, here it is. Suicide at local high school. Oh, I remember that. A high school girl jumped off a roof about a week ago. She was bullied, I think. Maybe it was something about exam pressure. Where's the name? Hmm? There it is. What? But... No, this can't be right. Her name... Michio Shiraishi from Komagara High School. It can't be. Michio Shiraishi, the same girl who witnessed my son's kidnapping. He committed suicide last week. What that means? Shinoti was terrified of someone who already died. Is that what he meant by a curse? I can't work this out on my own. Maybe Richter will know. Why would I call? Why would he call? Oh, I haven't lifted off the hook, have I? It's a fax machine. I really find a use for it. I don't even know who owns one. Where's the phone? Where's the phone? Phone? I already found you last time. Phone? Hello, phone? But who was phone? Who was phone? Should I put a record on? No, it's too late for that. I'm not in the mood for music anyways. Flowers would be at ease just a little. An old hanging scroll. I've seen it too often to feel anything from it now. I'm thinking that I never offered. Come to think of it, I never offered him any tea. Not that I ever learned how to make it. Hello, phone. Nothing on at this hour. I see no point in turning it on. Oh, clock. The ticking seems so loud. It just goes to show how quiet it is. Oh, phone. There's phone. I'm waiting for Richter to contact me, but he hasn't. Make sure the receiver is on the hook. The ring as soon as he calls. Ah! That must be him. I better pick up quickly. Be like us and buy a gallon so you don't have to make your own. Yeah. I'll pick up the phone. Hello. Sh Shijima residence. Where is he? It's the boy. Where's my boy? Coming on a bridge. 
There he is. Richter called me out here to meet him, and we came here to Kumagata Bridge. Richter, there's something I need to tell you. Funny, I was just thinking the same thing. We're on Kumagata Bridge over the Sumida River. It's a highway on one side and a freeway on the other, but they're both deserted this late at night. Ooh. We've got a bridge. One of the bridges spanning the Sumida River. Completed 1927 as part of the reconstruction effort following the Great Kanto Earthquake. Notable for both for its distinctive blue arches and the cutting edge of the time. Techniques used in its construction. There are many bridges stretching, stretching across the Sumida River, each boasting a unique structural form and design. Sumida River. The Sumida River. Water is filthy and horrid, but at night when it's still, it looks almost peaceful. Can I ask you something, ma'am? Is the Sumida River what you Honjo folks picture when you think of home? I couldn't say. All I can tell you is that I can hardly stand the sight of it. Hmm. All right. Should have guessed. This was where they found him after he went missing. All alone, floating in that horrible water. All I can think was how scared he must have been. How cold he must have been. What did he ever do to deserve something so awful? I've come here every day since then. And I pray to the river to give him back. Give me back my son. Day after day after day. You know, in olden times, people believed rivers marked where our world met the next. Hmm. So the act of crossing, wolf, crossing flow and water had a huge amount of spiritual significance. Back when Edo was founded, the people of Shuo saw the Sumida River the same way. They associated the far side of the river with the afterlife. That same place would later become Honjo. All their fear and revulsion accumulated there and took root. Oh? Then Ryogoku Bridge sprang up after the great fire of Meri... Meriki... Meriki. Just like that, Honjo was part of the city too. As it turned out... As it turned from farmland into a town, the people surrounded it with man-made rivers and crisscrossed it with canals and waterways. Weren't those to prevent flooding? That's what I was told. They were, but... But that's not all they were for. Their other purpose was to contain all the corruption that had built up on the far shore. And stop it leaking through to our side of the Great Divide. Officially, they were a physical barrier, but unofficially, they were a spiritual one, too. So, if I have this right, are you saying that Honjo is a place where the real world meets the afterlife? Exactly. That's why the Rite of Resurrection is here rather than anywhere else. I'm sure of it. It's probably why the Seven Mysteries and their curses have survived the modern day. I guess that would make this spot we're standing now, right over the water. The border between life and death. If there ever was a place where bringing back the dead might be possible, I reckon it's here. It's funny that you mentioned praying to the river. I might have done more than you think. Is that supposed to make me feel better? Just thinking aloud, ma'am. Hmm... Well, it's a nice thought. That's an interesting bit of, uh... A Class A river that is part of the Arakawa River system, which runs through most of eastern Tokyo and empties into the Tokyo Bay. During the Edo period, Sumida's riverbanks played a key role with the transportation of lumber used for construction. In addition to its logistical importance, it was also a place for the common folk to gather and enjoy activities such as seasonal flower viewing or river bathing. 
and there exist many woodblock prints depicting such activities. The area became plagued with sewage issues when the surrounding environs were industrialized in the post-war period. But the, sit the situation has improved since. Many unique bridges span the Sumida River, including the Ryagokuin Azumabashi bridges, which attract a large number of visitors as sightseeing spots. Massive fireworks displays in the summer are also always sure to draw a crowd. The river has served as a cornerstone for both the city and its people, having both aided in its development and serving, and its, serving as an inspiring backdrop for countless works of art and literature. Hmm. He's gazing down at the water. What does he see down there, I wonder? Oh, that's right. There's one more memory I have for this river. Do you mind if I tell you? Go ahead. It's been about twenty years now when I was still a schoolgirl. Back then, the Sumida River was much filthier than it is now. It was full of garbage and industrial discharge. It was scummy and slimy, and it stank. You look out over the water and see dead cats and dogs and pigeons just floating. And one day... And one day, amongst all the filth and garbage, there was a piece of my missing classmate's hand. I'm sorry? Oh, what? It was almost a miracle when you stopped to think about it. What were the chances that someone would find a part of her that was still recognizable? Well, goddamn! Now well, that, and that although everything but the palm had rotted away in the water, the part that was left would have an identifiable scar. If they could tell, it'd been a murder from the blade marks on the bone. Huh. Wait. Are you talking about the Nejima murders? So you have heard of it. I'm impressed. I assume you were but an elementary schooler at the time. I wasn't really aware of it then. I only heard about it after the fact. I had no idea the, I had no idea the victim was a classmate of yours. Oh, hello. Is Tavana had anything more about Yamamori? And the company. Fumichika Nejima. Brophy scared me. Yeah, that's... wow. Made my headlines over two decades ago as the perpetrator of the brutal killings known as the Nejima murders. I feel like... Hmm. I'm trying to remember when we encountered the Nejima murders before. To be honest, it was all a bit of a blur. I wanted to check. wave of chaos just parting around me. Something like that. I said the rest of her body must have sunk to the bottom of the river. I combed the riverbed, but they will never found pieces. Everything else must have rotted and flowed out to sea. I 
Afterwards, I heard that all the divers who had been looking for her fell ill. Sorry story for everyone involved, huh? It's funny. Everyone figures the river's filthy already, so one more piece of garbage won't hurt. Every little bit makes it worse. It's a vicious cycle. I know I, would, I, know I wouldn't want to go rooting around down there myself. That's right. Which is why the riverbed was the last place anybody would go looking. Or so was the killer's thinking, I suppose. Times were changing quickly back then. Things were confusing. Everyone seemed to be in a hurry. Young people were moving to Tokyo in droves. Some even ran away from home to make it in the big city. They made easy targets for bad people. A lot of them ended up disappearing without a trace. Hmm? You see, back then, if you chopped the body up into tiny pieces and threw it into the river, it would rot quickly and discreetly and sink to the bottom, and never to be seen again. Are you saying what I think you're saying? They arrested him shortly after, from Ichika Nejima. The man who killed my classmate and cut her into pieces. He was so methodical about it, it couldn't have been his first crime. And people began to wonder how many other girls he'd murdered the same way. The police never found any evidence of other murders in the end. But the river knows the truth. How many corpses have it, has it spalled up over the years, I wonder? When, when your river is so polluted that it's a viable body disposal ground. But same thoughts spread through everyone's mind and they started to avoid the area. So really, this river has been ranked with corruption for decades now. Or at least that's how it seems to me. Well, was that interesting? Well, I can see why you don't have any good memories of this river. With all that darkness lurking beneath the surface, there's no reason that you would. Still, if I may, ma'am, I'm surprised you know so much about the Nejima murders. But how could I not? After all... I was the one... Uh, who found the hand. Well! <laughs> the police actually wrote me a thank you letter. I said it was only thanks to me that they managed to bring Nejima to justice. It was the only time my father ever said he was proud of me. Wow. Ah. Huh. Guess it just wasn't the killer's day. Sometimes I wonder if he resents me for it. Well, goddamn. You're learning a lot about our girl today. Standing around is the last thing I want to be doing right now. This is the only chance to bring back my son. Can't afford to fritter it away. What about the river? It's been a river. I think we awful memories of it. Okay, we're done with the river. Anything hanging out behind us? Just check it. While we are here. Alright, Richter. Let's talk. You go first. Please, go ahead. Alright then. Poking around places connected to the Seven Mysteries, looking for curse bears. I think I've found a few candidates. Alright, let's hear it. First tall man I ran into in Kinshibori Park. We looked down to see the detective and his partner talking to each other. Yeah, honestly. I asked him for directions, trying to probe him a little, but he turned the questions right back around on me. Oh. A tall man in Kinshibori Park. I bet I know who that is. That has gotta be... 
You'd be okay. As we encountered him at the park when Shogo was there. And Shogo picked up the uh, uh, Whispering Canal curse. He was out of there the second he figured out I... The second he figured I wasn't what he was looking for. I got the sense curses were nothing new to him. I'm about 40% sure he's a curse bear. So the normal timeline when uh, Yoko goes home... Shogo likely gets killed by the one by the Whispering Canal. And our boy here becomes the curse bearer for the Whispering Canal. And there's this middle aged guy I saw in South Wadigasui Street. There's no question about this one. He had one of the curse stones in his hand. That looks like Jin Jinochi. He had a nervous air about him, too. It was clear he was up to some shady business. Gathering soul drinks, I bet, and he'd make a good target. Next up is a pair. A young man and woman I saw around Ria Goku Bridge. Oh! A woman with, uh... I don't remember his name offhand. With, uh, Yamagaki. So, he's working together. This time, the man came up to me and asked me flat out if I was a curse bear. I told him I didn't know what he was talking about, and he backpedaled and left. Looks like they look around here often. Looking for kindred spirits would be my guess. A pair of them. That's interesting. But did, oh, they weren't, look, they weren't working as a pair. Fair enough. But it didn't seem like they were quite working as a pair. Gathering soul dregs in a group might be a decent idea if you could make it work. Things being how they are, it's got to be hard to find folks one can trust. They've got brass, though. Don't know what their deal is, but I'd like to find out. Unless there's two detectives I've seen sniffing around. There they are. The police are involved. Not necessarily. A body turned up in a local park a few days ago, so they might just be looking into that. Still, the park's got ties to one of the seven mysteries. Might be it was a curse that did the guy in. If they're sending the detectives to the head office, then something's got to be up. How do you know where they're from? Let's just say that, that when you're in this business, there are some faces you get to know. Anyway, that's everyone who's caught my eye. You found all of them in so little time. I really did hire the best. It's all the name, ma'am. Richter Kai, P.I. No, wait. Make that Richter Kai, investigator extraordinaire. My, an investigator extraordinaire. Is that why you can dress like that without drawing attention to yourself? You bet. An investigator extraordinaire can blend in like a chameleon in, in any outfit. Well, that aside... The middle-aged man and the young couple sound the most promising, am I right? Whichever we pick, it's still too early to make a move. Seems like the curse bearers are less involved with each other than we th than we thought. Plus, there's still others we don't know about. I say we hang fire and see how things play out. Once more bodies start showing up, that'll get the pot nice and hot. Once it's boiling, our chance will come. There's something I need to tell you. What's up? Well... That girl, Michio Shiraishi. The one who was with Shuichi on the day of the kidnapping. That's her. Well... She's dead. She's what? The student, who, the student who committed suicide last week. That was her. I heard something like that happened. Never got the name, though. Talk about bad luck. Finally get a lead, only to find it's turned into a literal dead end. Unless, her death was the whole reason Jonoti was so shaken up. She said she was going to curse him. Is he talking about her taking revenge from beyond the grave? 
Seems like we're back where we started. Not necessarily. That teacher knows something, I'm sure of it. At the very least, I'd put money on him having something to do with Miss, Miss Shiraishi's death. That's why he's so scared of being cursed by her. I see. And also, something tells me he knows more about your son's kidnapping. Hmm? In any case, I think I've got a good idea of what he's hiding. Call it a hunch. I... A hunch? Well, more of a theory. Care to take a guess? Hmm. I can't say for certain, but... Hmm. Michio? He was involved to some degree. Had to start my phone so I couldn't see the stream. Oh. Oh, darn. Well, welcome back. We are theorizing right now. Theory crafting, even. Hmm. Hmm. Only saw the tall man. So the tall man. So the the curse bearers who uh, Victor has identified. The tall man. Who I'm thinking is this guy. Who is now the bearer of the uh, whispering canal, the curse that Shogo had. The, uh... Richter also identified... Yutaro. Yutaro and a mysterious woman. Who seemed to be acting together, but not truly together, so to speak. Yutaro, Yutaro did the same thing that he did with, uh, Tetsuo. Approached Richter... Asked him if he was a curse bearer. Richter said, what the fuck are you talking about? And Yutaro buggered off. Uh, oh yeah, Richter encountered... Mr. Junochi. And... Richter encountered Mr. J Mr. Junochi, who definitely has a curse stone. And then Richter also encountered uh, our detective friends. And now we're theorizing about what he knows. So, say so Michio, Silas Michinochi, with the curse or blackmail. This is the part we're not sure about. I think we're safe to say that Michio Shiraishi silenced Jinochi. Did not kill. Possibly silenced with blackmail. What if... Michio Shiraishi silenced Mr. Junochi with blackmail. What do you think? Interesting. That's what he claimed was going on, but I wonder about that. Hmm, would be a little far-fetched. I see. I'm sorry if I disappointed you. Oh no. I can't disappoint my boy. What do you think? He mentioned he was scared of that, but he doesn't tell us anything new. Oh no! Disappointed. Not really cut out to play detective. 
Well, no point dwelling on speculation. The truth will out in time. Right now, I think we need to have another chat with Mr. Junochi. I agree. Is something wrong? Not really. It just struck me. It's been 20 years since the Nejima murders. So it has. To spook you or anything, but I thought you might be interested in knowing. Hmm? Life in prison doesn't always mean life. There's precedent for first-time offenders being allowed out on parole after 20 years. If they're found to show remorse and desire to reform themselves, of course. That's right. I'm impressed you know so much. Still, it's hard for someone with a criminal record to be integrated to society. I hear they've been trying to fix that recently. Imagine inmates with, uh... Jobs and accommodations. Oh, really? They keep an eye on them, of course, and make them report in for regular checkups. But to avoid discrimination, they keep the inmates' records a secret from everyone but their employers. They even give particularly notorious criminals new identities so they won't be recognized in the workplace. My. The way you put it. It's like you're saying Fubichika Nejima could be out on parole right now. Back in society under a new name, with nobody any the wiser. It's possible. That happens, little birdie told me about a big name making parole a few months back. I don't know if that was Nejma, but our discussion just now did bring it to mind. I see. How oh, unsettling. Now that you mention it, I just remembered something, too. Smile? What was it? I was passing Komagata High School a little while ago when I saw someone... Yako? Oh, a janitor, I think. I could have sworn he reminded me of Fumi Chicken. It. Oh. 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 I could have sworn he reminded me of Fumi Chicken Nejima. Oh. He looked a little different after 20 years. Much th thinner than I remembered, too. I told myself I was just seeing things. But perhaps... Perhaps it was him after all. He looks way different now. That's a hell of a re reveal. So, what next? The big question now is what the rest of the curse bearers are up to. Luckily, this Mita River is a good distance from many of the seven mysteries. It's unlikely the other curse bearers will come all the way here. I can finally have a moment to think. I see. All right. Excuse me. Hmm? Ah? Uh? Woman jump scare? Woman jump scare? Are you? Is that a woman's voice? Who could it be? It's been a while since someone spooked me like that. All right, hello there. Where did she come from? It's like she appeared out of nowhere. Oh, this is the woman who was with you, Toddle. In, uh... Richter's little recap. You are new. Hello there. I didn't mean to startle you. I'm terribly sorry if I've gotten the wrong in people. But... Would you happen to be curse bearers? <sighs> well... Curse bearers? What's that, then? Um, it means someone who's gathering souls for the Rite of Resurrection. You've heard of the Rite of Resurrection, Art, haven't you? Everyone's talking about it. Gonna be intrigued. Can you tell me more, Miss, uh... What was your name again? Oh, silly me. I'm Ayame Tono. University student? Yeah? That tracks. You could be working with you, Toddle. She certainly had no reservations telling us about the Rite of Resurrection. 
It'd be worth keeping an eye on her. She could be trouble. She's choosing the forward route, like you thought it did. He says her name's Ayame. I guess I'd guess she's around 20. Just be brave, walking around alone this late. Maybe there's more to it. There's more to the right of resurrection than meets the eye, you see. So the best way to collect soul dregs is to kill other curse bearers. That's what the size of it. Abel, Abel wasn't too much to follow. No, no, I think I get the gist. What the old world we live in, huh? So you said you're one of these curse bearers? No, well, it, not quite. It's complicated. I'm not, but Yutaro is. Yutaro? Is that your boyfriend? Oh, heavens no, just a friend. His full name is Yutaro Namigaki. We're, I suppose you could say partners in crime. Funny way of putting it. Interesting. Must be it. She was behalf of the young couple Richter mentioned. So where is this Yutaro now? What about that? He's not actually a curse bearer anymore. He's more like a former curse bearer. She is docked this man too, yeah. Former? How so? Oh, so this is canonically taking place after Tetsuo disarms Yutaro. I don't really know the details myself, but apparently he lost his curse stone. Typical, right? Make such a show of it being a top student only to flunk where it counts. So now I'm out, out here looking for curse bearers myself. If you want something done right. That's a concerning attitude. She's in a curse bearer herself and her friend has lost his curse stone. Neither of them will be of use to me. So what is your plan? He's hiding it well, but I can sense that he's got his guard up. There'd be more to this girl than meets the eye. You should ask her what her deal is. I agree. He... lost it. How did he do that? I wasn't with him at the time, so I don't know exactly what happened. All I know is that he came back saying he didn't have it anymore. Although, well... It's strange that you'd probe into that, of all things. I'm just a curious sort, that's all. So if it's a touchy subject. Oh, I don't mind. I don't particularly care about keeping it a secret. Yutaro can be a little irrational sometimes, so I have to keep a level head on my shoulders. Why'd you approach us? It's so anyway. Mind if I ask why you thought I was a curse bearer? Oh, that! I'm terribly sorry, I was so rude! I saw the two of you out late at night, and I suppose I made assumptions. Gotcha. I'm sorry if we gave you the wrong idea. Out of interest, what was your plan if we did turn out to be curse bears? Great question! And the answer is, I was going to ask you very nicely for your curse stones. <laughs> and you thought we would just give them to you? Just like that? Well, maybe not. But you know what they say, you never know until you ask. You must really love your boyfriend if you're willing to try something that risky. Oh goodness, now we're just friends. My life doesn't revolve around him, you know. Respect. Anyway, you aren't curse bearers. I'm just bothering you, aren't I? Please ignore me. So what are you trying to do with this right of resurrection? Well, Utoro has his own plan all laid out. I don't know if I can get behind it, though. It seems... How do I put it? Self-centered? If you got a chance to resurrect the dead... It'd be a waste not to use it on someone that really matters, right? So I was planning to steal this curse down at the last second and use it for myself. Oh, wow. Wow, you really are in this for yourself. Well, until he lost it, anyways. Oh, but don't tell Yutaro I was, happy, I was going to do that, okay? I don't think he'd be happy to hear it. Of course. Keeping secrets is my business. My, aren't you dashing? Uh... Sounds like, you, sounds like you really have your heart set on this right. What were you hoping to, what were you hoping to use it on? Do you promise you won't laugh? Cross my heart. Well then, let me tell you my master plan. Prepare to be amazed. 
Ahem. I'm an art student, you see. Woodblock prints are my specialty. Ukiyo-e in particular. Ukiyo-e, huh? You must be a cultured lady. Really? Do you think so? Everyone says it's a strange interest for a girl to have. Oh. You know, people often think of Ukiyo-e as a, some inaccessible high-class art form. But that's actually totally untrue. Back in the Edo period, it's the art, of the art for the masses. Amusement for the common people. When you think about it, we feel exactly the same thrills from every brushstroke as they did back then. Isn't that fascinating? Huh. Yeah, I guess. As far as I'm concerned, the, un the undisputed king of Ukiyo-e is the one and only... Okusai. Oh! Have you heard of him? Sure. He's famous. Ah. Did, did he live here? Did he live somewhere around here back in the Edo period? That's right. You're just knowledgeable as you look. His 36 views of Mount Fuji are so iconic, they're the only works of his most people know. <laughs> Shoutouts to me. Shoutouts to uh, a certain subsection of uh, of uh, gamers who only know that from Fate Grand Order. But Hokusai was so much more than just mountains and waves. That's only the teeny tip of a veritable iceberg of work. Gotta admit, I only really know him for those landscapes myself. Oh, don't worry about it. Anyone can learn. When Hokusai, when Hokusai died at the age of 90, he left behind over 30,000 drawings. That's multiple drawings a day for, ten, for 80 years. Amazing, right? Wow, that's prolific. So he kept on drawing right up into his old age, huh? Impressive. Even in his final years, he was never satisfied with his own work. His dying words were, Should heaven afford me but five more years, I shall finally become a true artist. He's on his death, but he still thought he had more to learn. Are you going to use your, uh... Are you going to use the right of resurrection on Katsuka Hokusai? Hokusai? Oh my god. He was already the greatest painter and artist of his era. Who knows what he could have done with more time? She's really going to use this on Hokusai. That's what I want to find out. Oh my god, she is. Hmm? Hold on, are you saying? Ah. Besides, he always said he wanted to move out of 100 houses, but he only made it to 93. Isn't that just tragic? Oh no. Nuh uh. No way is this going where this is going where I think it's going. <laughs> Imagine the masterpiece you could create with modern techniques. I feel all dizzy just thinking about it. You've got to be kidding me. So if I understand correctly, you want to use the right of resurrection to... That's right. I want to bring Hokusai back to life. <laughs> wow. Huh. Well, that's certainly a uh, novel idea. Uh oh. Hare is, uh. That's what she'd use it on. What a waste. <laughs> it's unusual. It's. It's unique. Perhaps not the spirit of the legend of the, uh... Perhaps outside the spirit of the, uh... Legend of the Rite of Resurrection. Certainly outside the normal, given that the assumption of that be is very likely meant to be, uh... Hey, resurrect your loved ones. No, I'm gonna... I'm a cultured... 
I'm a cultured curse victim. I'm gonna bring back a famous artist so they can make some more cool make some more cool shit with modern techniques. Yep. Katsika Hokusai. Master Ukiyo-e artist. 1760-1849. Hokusai was active during the late Edo period, considered to be the golden age of Ukiyo-e in Japan. Born in Honjo! Hokusai spent most of his life in the area now known as Sumida City. Among his most famous works are the uh, 36 Views of Mount Fuji and the Hokusai Manga. Hokusai was a prolific artist from a young age and has left behind a wide variety of works, producing an estimated 300,000 pieces during his lifetime. Though the general popularity of Ukiyo-e declined during the Meiji period, Hokusai remained a core figure at the center of the... J of the... Haponis Haponisme movement? adding inspiration for countless artists around the globe. Despite his fame, Hokusai himself was said to be rather indifferent to money or decorum. He lived a life that quite appropriately resembled what that of the whimsical and otherworldly scenes often depicted in Ukiyo-e. Though he went by many names, in his later years he took on the title of Gakyo Rojin Manji, or the old bad painter. Manji? <laughs> Manji, are you a mad painter? Okusei lived to be 90 years old and never lost his passion for art. Well, well. Oh gosh, is that the time? We should be going. <laughs> Need to get my hands on a curse bear before daybreak. Sorry for flagging you down out of the blue like that. Best of luck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Alright then. Young woman working with Yutaro Namigaki. Her love of Katsuhiko Hokusai. It's ukiyo -e. It's so great that she wishes to resurrect him with the rite of resurrection. Well... Ayame is a clever but calculating university student who only has time for her own interests. Making the best of a recent boom in the popularity of female university students, students inside of their appearance across TV commercials and radio programs. What? She's making the best of a recent boom in the popularity of female university students. Eh? That is unique. I, I mean, fair enough. Make the best of it. And he's content to ride this trend so long as it allows her to get... It is fairly... new. According to the conversations we were having with the... Uh, Harare was having at the start of this fragment. Recently, Ayame has figured out that older men will fall for her if she acts a little bit stu... Oh... Clever girl. You, uh... Girl boss away. I can respect that. You know what? Respect. Go for it. She was approached by Yutaro Namikaki in town, and although she was not attracted to him, agreed to date him because his family seemed rich. However, she does not think much of him as a human being and is beginning to grow bored of their relationship. Oh, wow. <laughs> I I like you. Uh, I like you. Well, there goes trouble. When after curse does, we should keep an eye on her, too, if we can. Why do you say that? Before she wished, before she left, she wished us best of luck. She's got at least an inkling that we're curse bearers. Aye. There's a good chance I will clash sooner or later. We're after the same thing, after all. You, you head on back to the mansion, ma'am. I think I'll tail her for a while. No more cursing. That is terribly interesting. That is terribly interesting, turn of terribly interesting turn of events.
something to look at here. Nejima. And... Ashimiya. That's a startling difference. That's a startling difference right there. But the implication is there. I don't know if that's enough for us to concretely uh, go back into here and save Mio and get out of here alive, but yeah, that's a very startling difference. I think it's it's I think it's safe to assume that uh, the good janitor has a curse stone. I don't know if we have enough proof to go off of to say that uh, the good janitor is Fumichika Nejima. So let's let's see if we can get through uh, this next Tetsuo fragment. And then we'll call it a night. So, at the start of this, we got the foot washing mansion curse stone from uh, Namigaki. Midoricho Park. Let's go. This is this is where we encountered Shogo at. In the timeline where he had the uh, whispering canal. Oh, man. Excuse me. Sorry to bother you, but we have some questions for you. Junochi? No, other man. Hello, man. Arishi? What? Are you with the police? I haven't done anything. Don't worry. This isn't an interrogation or anything. We just want to talk. You're Hideki Araishi, right? The historian? We know who you are, so this won't take long. Since we saw you here, we'd just like to ask you a couple of questions. History research, eh? Araishi, local history researcher. A historian who works part time at a curator, at a uh, as a curator at the local folk museum, and as a teacher at Komogata High School. This publication on the Rite of Resurrection has caused a stir in occult, cir cult occult circles. He's the quintessential obsessive researcher. Despite being entirely unsuited for teaching, he had no choice but to take, take up a position at Komogata or to make ends meet. Having a captive audience in his classes goes some way to satisfying his need for respect and recognition, since heated nature makes him unpopular among the students. Maybe he's concerned that articles he contributed for purely monetary reasons have earned a reputation as a researcher of the occult, with a surge of interest in the topic and the resulting volume of article requests he is receiving are undeniably tempting. He's a regular at the Kurokikyo Cafe on Hokusai Street. Ah, Hokusai Street. Where he can be found outside his work hours writing essays and manuscripts. His published books include A Study of the Unknown and An Introduction to Bondo History. Well, let's get it over with. I'm a busy man. Neki Arishi says he's a local historian. Supposedly he knows more about the Rite of Resurrection than anybody. In fact, he's here at this time of night. It's plenty possible that he's a curse bearer. Questioning people like this can put unnecessary stress on them, depending on their position. This guy's pretty sharp. I have to play it safe and only push it when I see an opening. Boss, let's ask Hideki some questions. From appearances, it's hard to imagine this small, bookish, well-spoken man being very dangerous. But in this day and age, you never know. I should be careful. And now, Mr. Ari Mr. Arishi, what are you doing here at this time of night? Uh, doing research, of course. Day or night, information never sleeps. That's an admirable philosophy. You know, your research has been quite the talk of the town. What's there saying? 
I discovered something about this some book. Uh... Ah, yes, the book of dates. Uh... Do I try and get this right, or do I get this wrong and piss it off? The record of fates. All oh, right, you found some kind of ritual in the record of fates. What? Oh, don't tell me you want to know how to carry out the rite of resurrection too. To be perfectly honest, I'm tired of people asking me about it all the time. Not that even care about local history. I just come crawling out of the woodwork when something interesting comes up. Looks like I hit a nerve. If you can force me to tell you because you're a policeman, you're sorely mistaken. Was the research you were doing just now also related to the Rite of Resurrection? Well, yes, that's right. What exactly were you looking for? I have no reason to tell you that. You wouldn't understand anyways. Tell me what it is. Was the research you were doing just now also related to the Rite of Resurrection? Eh? Well, yes, that's right. Okay, so we are dated. Are you doing all this research so you can use the right of resurrection yourself? Hmm. You're a policeman. Do you really think people can be brought back to life? Everyone I meet. Pitiful. Huh? So you don't believe in the right? Whether it's real or not has nothing to do with my research. Such things are better left to the occult freaks. Oh, so I thought. Hmm? Things changed. It says it has become necessary for me to pursue the right. So now, I pray that it is real. What changed? I'm sure you can imagine the funds for my research. Receive a large amount of funding for seeking the right of resurrection. If I find it, I'll receive a sum so great that I'll never have to worry about money again. Oh, uh -huh. so that means... Someone is sponsoring your research. Is that right? So what if they are? You have no idea how hard we work to secure funding for our research. I have no interest in teaching those children. Listen to me, I'll tell you one thing. Those experts you see writing provocative books on spouting... or spouting nonsense on TV to try and get popular. All of them just trying to get the money they need to do their research. How popular the occult is, saying something even remotely spooky can lead to big money. What? But I bought your book! Pursuit of the Unknown begins, first and foremost, with belief! I was so inspired by that bit! I do appreciate your patronage. Unfortunately, however, the occult is not my true interest. Hate of the Unknown is to be destroyed by thorough research and deep consideration. No way, I can't believe it! You're surprisingly innocent. And what kind of research do you want to be doing? Hmm. I'm not sure it wouldn't interest you, but to put it simply, the focus of my research is to how historical accounts transform into folklore over the years as they are passed down from generation to generation. That would be legitimately interesting. What does that mean? Due to human bias, the account of any event is inevitably changed by the person communicating it. This is not necessarily done with ill intentions. It happens when someone tries to fill in the gaps in a story that lacks detail. Some things that are let out, left out or abridged because of the story's length. When a story twists and shifts as it's spread through oral tradition. Even when two stories are told about the same event, differences in culture or environment affect how it's told, changing, the con changing its content. So little things can turn into terribly mysterious legends. My research is the study of how history, culture, and legend all influence each other. Ah, oh, I see. Take the Seven Mysteries of Honjo, for example. Why are some of the mysteries seemingly about nothing particularly interesting? You think stories that wouldn't last a decade, let alone hundreds of years. So why? Perhaps putting it that way piques your interest. I, I admit I'm curious. So that's what you've been researching all this time. Makes sense. As I said, it doesn't matter to me whether the right exists or not. The people of the Edo period believed that, it were, that what was written in the Record of Fates was real. 
That's all I'm interested in. I'd have to be realistic. The research I'd like to do is unfortunately not very lucrative. That's why I need to take some risks. This record of fates. Where did you get your hands on it? The storehouse of an old private residence in the city, just as the public was told. I am unable to be more precise due to my agreement with my informant. Well, in that case... I think I uh, might have a guess as to what it is you were looking for. Could, in theory, be any of these. What? Curse stones. Damn it, if you know about that then. Calm down. No need to be so no need to get so defensive. Hey, it worked before. We both want information, right? Why don't we have a nice friendly chat? Hey. A curse stone. You are a curse bear. A leaf. It's the evergreen beach then. Yep. Will you show me yours? This is mine. The ever burning lan Oh The Ever Burning Lantern. Hmm. Interesting. So we killed this guy in the prologue as Shogo. Reveal? I'll tell you this for free. The Evergreen Beach comes from a man who was hanged for spreading false rumors. But the accusations against him were unfounded, and he died cursing those who deceived him. Ah, so that is the resentful memory held within the Evergreen Beach. The memories of the Seven Mysteries are truly fascinating. If only I could collect them all. Do whatever you want, but you should know something. The stone of mine lets me curse anyone who tries to mislead me. What? But So don't try and lie to me. Oh no. You... You would curse a citizen, and you call yourself an officer of the law! That all depends on you. I don't want to use it if I don't have to. What is it you want? The cursed stones are dangerous. I'd like to confiscate yours. Excuse me, but my right. First, let me ask you one thing. You... You haven't used that curse, have you? No, of course I haven't. I swear. You want to find out? Do we want to find out? Do we want to test this? Do we want to test it? What do you say? Shall we see if he's... Shall we see if he has used his curse? It is a, uh simple matter to figure this out. Let us see. I see. Good. Okay. He is telling the truth. So he has not used it this path. Unless you'd rather try using it on me instead. Damn you. I won't give it to you. I would say that. What would happen? Would it be a crime? The police are aware of how dangerous the stones are. I could arrest you under Article 1, Section 2 of the Minor Offenses Act. Or you hand it over and all you lose is your secret ability. Think of what would happen to all your research if you were arrested. Fine. You can have the stone. Here. Alright! I have a burning lantern acquired. Kills by disembowelment, one who finds themselves trapped in the darkness of the curse echo. Yeah? 
That's what happened to Shogo the first time through. Warikasui. Yep, Sober Cart. Really did happen upon a Sober Cart as Shogo. So, when Honda was filled with samurai residences, the spies of the Shogun had lived amongst the townspeople to keep an eye on things. The Sober Cart on South Warikasui served as one of their outposts. They would communicate to each other in code by turning the lantern on or off. Tonight at 4 a.m., meant that someone would be having the last soba of their life, and that their belly would be sliced open tonight. The next night, an unfortunate incident occurred in which a man attacked a woman in a bout of fury. He regretted it deeply, even declining to invoke the right to defend his honor, but the deed was done. Still, he could not accept it. His rage at having been used by his dabio boiled over, turning into a grudge he would never forget. Nearby he saw a lantern quietly glowing in the night, and when the sixth bell rang, the man cut his own stomach open. Since then, the lantern could be seen alight before the, sto before the sober cart had opened, and would flicker out suddenly, even when there was no wind blowing. As this unsettling phenomenon continued, the rumors surrounding it grew, and all soon all were convinced that it was the man who cut open his stomach visiting from the beyond. Ah. Good choice. I look forward to seeing how your research pans out. Hmm. All right. Could you tell us everything you know about what's been going on. If you help us out, we'll give you all the information we've gotten after we solve the case. What do you say? In that case, will you tell me about all the resentful memories of the Seven Mysteries? I believe they are the key to the secret hidden in the Record of Fates. Sure, why not? I'll learn about them as I collect the curse stones. Well, thanks to you, we learned a lot from him. I wonder if the mysteries in the right are all public information. Kept everything he knows about the other curse bearers and the source of the curse here hidden. I was hoping he'd at least give us a clue about how to beat these curses. Oh, I see. And we should be more aggressive next time. Really make them spit it out. And by we, I mean you. I guess he wants to save this curse. He wouldn't have told us anything, no matter what he asked. Now we know where he hangs out. You can always send someone for him if need be. Right, got it. I was surprised to hear that there were actually nine of the seven mysteries, though. Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's two extra curse bearers we have to find. I confiscated two, so there's six more. They could be anywhere in this town. To find them fast, they may start using the curses. No, I think we're already too late. Huh? I didn't tell you this, but there were some soul dregs in Namigaki's curse. Oh! Really? Then he already killed someone with it? It's not much, so it probably wasn't a curse bear. Shit. We know who did it. We can make arrangements to take him into custody. But paranormal affairs pick him up tomorrow. Now we continue our search. Right. On to the next place. We just have to cross them off the list one by one. Oh, but, boss. Hmm? Good to know we could use the Minor Offenses Act and arrest people with curse stones. No, we can't. I was just bullshitting. Why didn't we do that with Namigaki? If we could do that, there'd be no need for pardonable affairs. What grounds would a normal detective have to put him under arrest? Oh, right. Yeah, I suppose that's true. Oh. Interesting. Can't actually open up Harway's next, uh... Hmm. Does this mean that we're going to come to the end of these three stories? And, uh... Loop around to... More characters, then. Intriguing. We've learned a lot- we learned a lot this episode. We need to come back and save me- 
and save uh, Mio next time. We got this guy who's sus as hell. We met the janitor, who is equally sus. We figured out your deal. We beat you thoroughly. We met your friend, your not friend, who is completely girl bossing you, Toto. Well played, ma'am. Respect to you. We got a lot going on here. So, what do we want to see here? Files. So, Seven Mysteries of Honjo, Whispering Canal. So we don't know who's be who has the Whispering Canal right now. Yako has the Fool's Procession. We don't have the Beckoning Light. Uh, Haraway has the Haunting Clappers. Tetsuo has the uh, Evergreen Beach. We don't know the Taiko of, Su of Sugaru. Yutoro had the uh, Foot Washing Mansion. The one sided reed is held by someone in the school. Because someone killed. In the path we're locked out of right now, in the cliffhanger we're going to leave off on, someone killed Mio with the one-sided... Someone killed Mio and Yaka with the one-sided reed. And the assumption is that it's the janitor. We have the ever-burning lantern. Who was, uh... Possessed by our historian friend. And that's the curse. That, uh. Yep, he had the ever burning lantern. And that's who tried to kill Shogo. Second. After all this, that was Shogo's second victim. So next time we pick this up, we're gonna save Yako and Har Yako and Mio. Good kids. We're gonna save them from Janitor Kun, most likely. I'm really curious to see what uh, Harue gets up to next. That's really interesting that we encountered Ayame here. I'm really curious to see where that leads. Hopefully see this again tomorrow. I'll do my best to bring this back tomorrow. I promise. Be perfectly honest. I really want to bring this back tomorrow. Since we are here... Let us see who is on... Also, I finally st also I finally started reading Meow Rangers. <laughs> Let's see who is who is still up currently. There's a uh, Shining Heart PT playing Pizza Cats. Looks like a Mega Man like game. Uh, Tundra Flame is playing. Uh, it is fun. It is it is fun so far. It's a. Uh, I wasn't expecting it to be as directly. The premise is very silly but fun. <laughs> I'm very much enjoying it right now. <laughs> I'm only like two or three chapters in, but is it is fun. 
I'm very much glad for that. Okay, yeah, I think we're gonna go, uh... Raid. Uh, I think I'm on chapter... Th episode 3 right now? So yeah, we're gonna... But definitely, I finally got, finally got the chance to start, and I'm glad I did, because it is good fun. So... We're gonna go re. We're gonna go raid uh, Ryusei's Shining Heart, Dragon Wizard. Playing some uh, Pizza Cats. Looks like an NES-like uh, fun little game.